Let's take a look at why the F-35 just might be misunderstood. The F-35 has become the most expensive weapon system ever, and as a result has become an easy target for criticism. I myself have been critical of the F-35 in previous videos on this channel. Today, we will take a look at what the F-35 was designed to do and why it's already successful. Essentially, when the F-35 was designed, super maneuverability or dogfighting was not its top priority. We have to remember that the F-35 was designed as a fighter and attack platform designed from the ground up to perform both air superiority and strike missions. In fact, some have stated that the F-35 should have been designated the A-35 or F-A-35. Instead of prioritizing dogfighting, the F-35 placed stealth and sensor fusion as its main focus. In this role, the F-35 is unprecedented. When it comes to the F-35 sensor platform, it can run both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground modes simultaneously, providing the F-35 with first look, first shoot, and first kill capabilities. Additionally, the F-35 makes use of the Distributed Aperture System, or DAS. DAS provides 360-degree spherical awareness, and this is accomplished in part by using six cameras which are mounted all throughout the aircraft, providing real-time HD data to the pilot. The F-35 also does not feature a HUD, instead integrating telemetry normally found on HUDs directly into the pilot's helmet. This allows for the pilot to constantly see critical information at all times. Furthermore, the DAS algorithm analyzes threats and prioritizes them for the pilot to act accordingly. The F-35's advanced data links also provide connectivity to all allied assets in the area, essentially sharing targeting and sensor information with any connected platform. One potential application for this could be for an F-35 to lock onto an aircraft and pass that data to a SAM site to shoot at it, or to an F-15 Eagle II loaded with an extreme amount of AMRAMs that could prosecute the target. Due to its advanced sensor platform and sensor suite, the F-35 has been called the most interconnected fighter in the world, and the reality is that no fourth generation fighter can match this interconnectivity. Sensor fusion is the next evolution in aerial warfare, and the F-35 is definitely leading that front. It's important to note that maneuvering still matters and dogfighting skills are still needed, but these are really a last resort. And remember, F-35 pilots still practice air-to-air -air combat maneuvering at exercises such as Red Flag. Along with sensor fusion, another asset that the F-35 brings to the battlefield is its role as a drone controller. This is somewhat an overlooked feature of the F-35 as it is still under development and really starting to come into its own in recent years. For example, the Department of Defense's Skyborg AI program looks to use drones such as the XQ-58 Valkyrie as a low-cost attributable fighter. In this case, attributable means reusable but can be afforded to be lost in battle. These Valkyries would be sent out in front of an F-35 and could serve as an inexpensive early warning system and picket line. In an attack role, the Valkyries could be used to set off defenses and cause surface-to-air missiles to fire at the drones, keeping the F-35 safe. Additionally, the drones themselves can carry munitions so they could be used to intercept and attack or prosecute targets. An F-35 controlling these drones therefore could be seen as a force multiplier, maximizing the F-35's effectiveness while minimizing the risk to the human pilot. The F-35 also provides versatility in its variable airframe offerings. There are currently three variants, the A, B, and C. The F-35A is the most common variant and features an internal 25mm gun, has the highest payload, and additionally the lowest cost of the three variants. Meanwhile, the F-35B is a short takeoff and vertical landing or Stolvol version of the Lightning and is currently in service with the US Marines and the UK's Royal Navy. The short takeoff and vertical landing provides tactical flexibility as it can operate out of unimproved airfields or carriers that do not have a catapult system. Additionally, the F-35B is the first supersonic Stovall aircraft and the only 5th generation Stovall available today. And lastly, the F-35C is the carrier-based version of the Lightning, which implements Catabar or catapult-assisted takeoff but arrested recovery to operate out of carriers. The F-35C is currently in use today by the U.S. Navy. And as they say, numbers don't lie. The F-35 was designed from day one to be a joint strike fighter, meaning it would be available as an export option to allies. In this way, success can be measured in the number of countries that have adopted it and are planning to adopt it. For example, Australia has 40 examples delivered out of 72 planned. Belgium plans for 34 F-35As. Denmark plans for 27 F-35As. Israel has 27 of 75 F-35Is, which are locally modified F-35s. Italy plans for 60 F-35As and 15 F-35Bs. 
Japan has 13 F-35As operational with a total of 147 planned, which includes 42 F-35Bs. The Netherlands has 17 of 46 F-35As. Norway is currently operating 25 F-35As out of 52 planned. Poland has placed an order for 32 F-35As. South Korea has 11 F-35As out of 60 ordered, along with an additional 20 F-35Bs. Singapore has orders for 4 F-35Bs with an option for 8 more. The UAE has planned for up to 50 F-35As. The UK has received 21 F-35Bs with a total of 48 to 80 planned. The Swiss have recently chosen the F-35 as their new fighter and stated their decision was based on costs. And as we know, the Swiss know a thing or two about money. Additionally, as more and more nations adopt the F-35, the unit cost goes down. Current F-35 prices are under 80 million a copy, which is significantly lower than fourth generation platforms like the Eurofighter and Typhoon, each of which are over $100 million a copy. And finally, the United States has put the largest order of F-35s with over 1,700 F-35As planned for the Air Force, 353 F-35Bs and 67 F-35Cs planned for the Marines, and the Navy has plans for over 270 F-35Cs. All of these orders have kept the F-35 production line busy, with over 690 aircraft delivered to date, and over 245,000 sorties already flown by F-35s. All of this adds up to say, the F-35 will only keep getting better, more numerous, and more affordable. The F-35 has definitely had its share of cost overruns and delays, but let's remember it set out to be a cutting-edge, air-to-everything platform, with modularity and upgrades in mind. To this end, F-35s are predicted to serve until 2070 and may very well be the last manned fighter for the US Armed Forces and its allies. Being cutting edge is always difficult and poses its challenges. The F-35 has come to age in the era of social media and the 24-hour news cycle. Some of you may recall when the F-16 was being introduced, initially was known as the Lawn Dart and had its fair share of problems and growing pains in its early years. However, the F-16, based on numbers produced, has become the world's most popular fighter. Perhaps the F-35 will follow a similar path. And finally, if there's still doubts about the F-35, as they say, imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. Both Russia and China have announced plans to produce a fighter that is similar in capability and design to the F-35. In Russia's case, the recently announced Su-75 Checkmate, link to my video on the Checkmate in the description below. And for China, it is the Shenyang FC-31 or J-35. Therefore, between a number of nations adopting it and adversaries copying it, you can say that the F-35 has and will continue to be successful and perhaps may just have been misunderstood. Having said that, keep in mind, there's still a need for fourth generation fighters and we are lucky to count Vipers, Eagles, Super Hornets, Typhoon and Rafals as allies, which are all excellent fighters. However, sensor fusion and stealth are here to stay and will likely play a large role in the coming years, both tactically and strategically. What do you think? Has the F-35 been misunderstood? Has it turned the corner in its development? Will it be the last man fighter? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss when another video comes out. I'd also like to take a moment to thank my patrons who support this channel. If you'd like to become a patron, I'll leave a link in the description below. Stay safe and see you next time.